Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and give you guys the 3.14 Righteous Fire Inquisitor um, build for Ultimatum. Now it is going to be a league starter, yet of course it is going to be one of the more expensive league starts as Righteous Fire is not really like a super crazy high damaging build unless of course you're playing a very squishy variant and I don't really make builds like that. I prefer the more tanky side. So before I get into explaining everything about the build, we're going to go ahead and jump into a T16 map where you can kind of see where your end game gear is going to allow you to go. So here's a T16. Uh, for the sake of this showcase, since we're not going to be having Explodey Chest, I'm going to just take off the Explodey Chest until we get to the boss, since it kind of has my Flame Wall, which is my single target. Uh, I do have really GG gear, but because I'm not using Flame Wall, we're actually missing an entire link, which would be Inspiration. So let's get started. So with this new variant, whenever you encounter things like porcupines and stuff, we're going to have an insta-cast Infernal Cry that you can literally blow the whole screen up for. So I'll try to like simulate it a little bit, but it's going to be hard because with this variant we don't have instant war cry, and the new variant we do get instant war cry. It'll also have more AoE in the new variant, and super good cooldown reduction. I would click this, but without a chest piece, this is probably kind of stupid. Oh my. All right, oh, I just realized I was on display capture. Sorry about that, guys. I'm usually on the PoE scene. Sorry if it looked laggy. Okay, so to go on and explain the changes of this, let's go ahead and start with the basics. So, in the tree section here, uh, in this tree, you'll notice there is a big breakdown. We've got a 1 to 24, 24 to 48, 49 to 66, which is around the time when you're doing Cruel Lab, this is around the time when you're going to swap to RF. You can do RF earlier, but for the sake of this, it's meant for Cruel Lab, basically, right? Uh, then, you can see the everything here is also set up with no clusters, right? So, 86 plus in this variant here... Actually, this is... Is this actually the correct one? Yeah, yeah. The 86 plus, it's supposed to say 88 plus, it doesn't really matter, um, is when you start switching into clusters. So, this version here is the less budget friendly i mean when you're investing currency into a build you're going to eventually start getting cluster jewels so if you take a look here i want to highlight the number one change for this build in the standard build we used aka last league i used the tempered by war here which made us path through here to favor basically grabbing these in this variant we use a large thread of hope instead the reason for the large thread of hope is it favors us pathing down here. And the reason why we want to path down here is since it's day one, day two of the league, no one's going to have an explodey chest and explodey chest in general was nerfed. So what this allows us to do is get call to arms, which gives us instant war cries, which means we don't have to use uh, urgent orders, which means we have minus two second cooldown on our infernal and our enduring cry. And because of this thread of hope positioning, we grab Warrior's Blood, Heart of the Warrior, you get access to two additional 5% life nodes, you get Deep Breaths, which is 30% AoE to the Warcry, and you get 30% Warcry cooldown recovery. So not only are you minus two seconds, you also have 30% recovery, and you grab Arsonist. So to give an example and show how big my Infernal Cry is right now, if I go into the Calculator tab, and we look at Infernal Cry here, we can see that the AoE of our Infernal Cry is 84 radius. Now the 84 radius on Infernal Cry is pretty easy to achieve. This is our eight burning bright jewels, which in our tree, just like last league, we have just white cluster jewels with burning bright. Burning brights did not get nerfed and you get 20% from the gem itself, 8% from all your burning brights and 30% from the war cry itself. Or sorry, 20% from the Warcry itself, 30% from the node that gives cooldown reduction. 
Thus, this gives you a near full screen uh, Infernal Cry, which is insane for things like Blighted Maps, Porcupines, really tanky packs. You just tap the Infernal Cry, it's going to blow up almost the entire screen. Um, so to give a better understanding of how this works, Greetings. let me go ahead and go to like Blood Aqueduct over here. So in Blood Aqueduct, I'm just going to put on Ink AoE. Do I have Ink AoE here? Let's put Ink AoE on my Infernal Cry. The reason why is I don't have the 30% node um, from Deep Breaths. So here's a pack and there's a rare. I hit the Infernal Cry, I kill this mob, the game lags, and pretty much everything but the rare blows up, in which case you just kill the rare, right? Same thing with this pack, right? You hit the Infernal Cry, you t okay, that didn't count, the Wave of Conviction killed everything. Here we go again, Infernal Cry, fucking Wave of Conviction, dude, it keeps blowing everything up. All right, that, you get an idea of pretty much how it works, right? All right, so let's go back to our tree here. So I'm going to explain the process and, and basically the reasons of why we're doing what, right? So level 1 to 24... Um, you are focusing on just basically pathing through, grabbing damage, grabbing Holy Dominion, the Light of Divinity, and then you can either A, rush towards Firewalker, or B, rush towards Holy Fire. Um, typically, I just grab Arcanist Dominion, then grab Firewalker, and then just go here, but it, it doesn't matter too much. It's very early. 24 to 48, you can see we pick up Ellie Overload, we pick up Firewalker, come down, grab Shaper, and start moving towards Arsonist. It's a lot of traveling points, but this is just part of the build. Then 49 to 66, you can see this is when we start swapping to RF. So some of the big key parts and what you want to pick up are sources of life regen, maximum resistance via anointed flesh, maximum resistance, AKA barbarism, uh, more life regen via like arsonist. Then you can see we start grabbing life for heart and soul. Then let's just zoom this out. You can see 67 to 87 is basically fleshing out the build. You can see we're pathing into Marauder to grab the regeneration. And then 87 plus, we're pretty much filling in the rest. This is where we grab Call to Arms, Bloodless, and etc. And then the Thread of Hope positioning that I showed you guys earlier. Then you have my old Righteous Fire build that you can see, which is basically the min-maxed version of what I'm running. Um, I have made the change with the Thread of Hope. Now, the Thread of Hope change may not be 100% final. We may just go back to the exact same style of RF we played before, but I feel that this is going to be much, much, much better on a cheap budget, um, getting the Call to Arms, basically. So that's something I definitely wanted to do. As for the Cluster Jewels, the Cluster Jewels I'm running are not expensive. They were not that expensive last League. A lot of people said they are super expensive. You could grab your Burning Brights for like literally 20 to 30 Chaos. I know that may be expensive for some people, but like 20 to 30 Chaos for a Cluster Jewel you're not touching until you get multi exalts, I think is very, very good, right? So you grab your Burning Brights, same thing here, you grab your Burning Bright, then you push the Medium Cluster. You can actually completely skip Medium Clusters and go right to Molten One's Marks if you want, and then get your Medium Clusters after. Molten One's Marks are so important for this build because hitting 90% max fire res equals less fire damage taken, more life regeneration, right? So these are like the number one most important and they're so easy to roll. They cost less than Burning Brights. So super big. The number one thing I regret with my last build is not bringing the importance of Molten One's Marks to hit your 90% max fire res. These are very, very easy very important all right with that being said i kind of want to go over the items so um i have a low level gear and then i have my level 100 rf which has more ideal gear now the low level gear is not necessarily low level it's just basically stuff that doesn't cost an insane amount of currency that gets you started 
Um, I'm not a big fan of making preset gear because I always change things as I play around. But for the sake of what people demanded, I tried to do my best in just giving you a basic setup for basically if you don't have good gear, this is what you'd want. The helmet is a bit expensive that I posted in here. The reason why I made the expensive, like the helmet expensive, is to bring importance of where you want to funnel currency. Your helmet is like your six link. Your helmet is where your RF will gain its damage. If your clear is bad, you need to invest in your helmet. Your helmet gives you damage for RF. You're not clearing with flame wall. Flame wall is for single target. You're clearing with your RF, which is in your helmet, right? So one thing to note is it's not very important to get conch effect. It's much more important to get the socketed gems deal 30% more Ellie with the level 20 burn. And you get that via... Uh, your essences. I forgot exactly which. I think it's essence of horror in your helmet is the 30% more Ellie. All you have to do is hit 30% more Ellie with your burn damage. It can even be a level 16 burn damage. It's more than usable. That will get you started easily into yellow maps, even potentially into red maps. Then you can min max by trying to reroll new helmets, getting, you know, an ideal life roll. And then if you have a good life roll, you can craft the physical damage taken as fire. Another big thing is pushing into red maps, you really, 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 really want to get a, here we go, Replica Soul Tether. Replica Soul Tether is the number one largest form of survivability. I know that Corrupted Soul was nerfed, but it doesn't, it doesn't mean the build is like garbage. It's still an extremely important thing to grab. So now that I have slightly went over the gear, I want to talk about the notes section. I tried to bring a massive detail uh, information specifically to the notes section. So for the sake of this notes section, I kind of want to explain what I did. So I have categorized each one kind of by what it is. I guess I should have put it here. This is basically leveling before Righteous Fire. So if, you've, if you know how to do this, you, you can completely skip this. This is getting ready to go RF, which is around like, you know, 50s. It's, it's around your Cruel Lab. Here I have posted tips, information, auras you want to run, all dedicated for new players. It, you don't need to know this stuff if you've played RF multiple times. This is the changes that I've explained were basically what I've talked about right now. And then these are changes I'm not necessarily going to be talking about, but this is pretty much everything I could possibly tell you about what changed with RF from the patch. The biggest thing I want to talk about is, or the only thing I guess, is Vol Righteous Fire. Vol Righteous Fire has received buffs in the sense of it's a lot more risky to use, but if you use your Enduring Cry, you'll be full life instantly, right? So Vol Righteous Fire can now pretty much be used when mapping. They cut the lockout time of Vol RF from 12 seconds to 6 seconds, and they essentially doubled the source of how you generate your Vol skills, which means if you are struggling on bosses because of damage, you can use Vol RF like two to three times as much now. So this should really, really help RF builds who are kind of struggling if they're already tanky, right? So if you're tanky enough to survive, you can just use Enduring Cry right when you use Vol RF and your Vol RF will be a massive damage increase. If you don't have your Molten Ones marks and you're running around with like 78% fire res, chances are it's gonna be very dangerous for you to use Vol RF. But if you're specializing in Righteous Fire and you're doing really well to self-mitigate the damage, you should be fine, right? So that's another big thing to talk about. Uh, over here, also in the Getting Ready to Go RF, I have posted a few very, very small amount of leveling tips because I don't really want to bring a lot of attention to this because after one to two days, you should be in maps. And that's where the uh, videos where I'll be producing basically like explaining what choices I'm taking one essentially uh, how do I say this kind of like a let's play for righteous fire because naturally I'm gonna have different gear than you you're gonna have different gear than me uh, so as I make the progression videos you can kind of realize what I do another big thing that changed with righteous fire is flesh and stone is now 35% instead of 25% um, because of this you may want to run an Enlightened level 4, but that's only if you want to min-max and go with an aspect of spider setup um, that you can see I have in my amulet. Now again, 
a lot of this gear may seem crazy, but this is actually the gear I, uh, I acquired in the last league. And you do not need over-the-top gear like this to do anything. This is just because we have the currency to invest. Naturally, we're going to invest because we're done. You know, I hit level 100, so I just wanted to flesh out. That being said, a lot of this gear is still going to be acquired, like possible to acquire. It's just not going to have the perfect rolls on everything. You can still really easily deterministically make a plus one, plus one amulet. And that's and then you slam it and you hit a life roll and it's by far usable already, right? So that's, that's some big things to talk about. Um, anyway, other than that, that's pretty much everything that I can give you guys. Uh, of course, for your bandits, you're going to be killing them all. There's not really much of a reason to help anyone. Uh, and then for your pantheon, you probably are going to be running Brine King because of stun, since we are not stun immune. Uh, the one annoying thing I found out with the last build is I didn't get stunned too much, but oftentimes I got stunned out of using Enduring Cry. With instant war cries, you will not get stunned out of using Enduring Cry. Another common question I get is, are you sure you want to run two different war cries when running call to arms, right? The thing is, you're going to use Infernal Cry for clearing, and you're going to use Enduring Cry when you're bossing. So, like, you should have your Enduring Cry ready for when you're going to take a burst hit, right? You don't need to spam your Infernal Cry button when you're doing a boss. It's just a slight damage increase. It's not a big deal, right? Just as when you're mapping, you shouldn't really need to spam your Enduring Cry, because let's be real. When you're mapping, you don't know what's going to smack you for 5k, I mean, sometimes, you know, if there's like a gigantic colossal bone stalker with like sub fizz, but for the most part, usually it's like random shit off screen that smacks you, in which case then you'll reactively hit your enduring cry button, right? So anyway, I hope that this video helps you guys. I hope that this can kind of really help you guys out with the progression. Remember, I'll be league starting as this from day one, so you can see everything I acquire. I will be working on a day one goals, so that you can kind of see everything that I'm trying to get. Um, and then I guess the last thing is I know in my other RF video I made like three months ago on the right hand side here We actually passed through which and went here the reason why I didn't go this route I did type it up in the notes, but a simple TLDR is you lose damage and you lose mana But on the left side you gain a lot of physical mitigation and the physical mitigation I think is totally worth it on an RF build because you will not have many sources of physical damage uh, taken as fire. So relying on endurance charges can often really save you before you get more gear. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. If you guys liked the video, don't forget you can like, share, and subscribe. And you can also catch me streaming live every day but Sundays. Although I will be making an exception, we'll be streaming the PoE League this Sunday as well. So you can catch me there at twitch.tv slash pox. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. But note that I will tell you to read the notes if it's an obvious question. So you can still ask me, but make sure you've at least skimmed through some of the notes to make sure it's not answered. There's also an FAQ uh, that I will have on my stream, which I guess I should link in the notes, but we'll have to do that another time. Anyway, take care. Hope you guys had a wonderful time, and I'll see you guys in Ultimatum League. Have a good one.